Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and today we are going to be talking about Mach and Reynolds numbers as you might have seen from the title of the video so let's start with the Mach number first Mach number can tell us how fast the airflow is so for example, let's say I told you the airflow is 200 meters per second or I tell you the aircraft is flying at 700 miles per hour is it fast or is it not? What is the standard for being fast? If you think about it, 200 meters per second is pretty fast because people can only cover that distance in 20 seconds or about that time. But what measurement could we find to figure out how fast the aircraft is? It turns out it's the speed of sound. So, if you don't remember, speed of sound is 343 meters per second and it's denoted by letter A. So, what would be the way to figure out how fast 200 meters per second is compared to the speed of sound? Well, that will be the Mach number. The Mach number is just the ratio of the velocity of the airflow or the aircraft to the speed of sound. Mach number, it is named after Austrian physicist Ernst Mach and it's denoted by capital letter M and it's the ratio of the speed of the airflow to the speed of sound. So let's figure out how fast actually 200 meters per second is. We find Mach number for 200 meters per second. So divide 200 by 343 so we'll get 0 0.58 and meters per second will cancel out so it turns out that Mach number is a dimensionless number because it's the ratio of two speeds or velocities and I will explain in the end of this video why Mach number and Reynolds number are so important in aerodynamics. But there's something we need to note in this equation. It's that the speed of sound can change with temperature. So the speed of sound, it's not always the same. Let me write down the formula first and then we'll explain it in simple terms. So the speed of sound changes according to this formula. What are all these symbols here? So gamma here is the adiabatic index, which measures how much of the heat of a molecule is generated by rotating the molecule or vibrating the molecule. But it's not really important for you to remember that. Gamma for air was measured to be 1.4, and this value doesn't have a unit either. In the next equation, let's plug in the values that we know. So this is the gas constant for air which will give us 287 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So how do we find this number? So in order to find the gas constant, we need to divide the universal gas constant, R, by the molar mass of the gas that we're interested in. So for our case, it's going to be molar mass of air. Now let's plug in the values that we know. The universal gas constant is 8.31 8 joules per mole per Kelvin. And the molar mass of air is 29 grams per mole. So how do we get such a big value from dividing 8 by 29? Well, notice that we have grams here and kilograms here. So we have to express grams in kilograms in order to get our gas constant for air. In order to do that, you can divide 29 by 1000, which means you can multiply the numerator by 1000. So that will give you 8310 divided by 29. The units will stay here. Now it's going to be kilograms per mole. So we'll cancel moles, the kelvins will go down, and this value will give us 287 joules per kilogram per kelvin. 
Okay, so that's only the second parameter in the equation. And now we have a third parameter, which is temperature. We know that temperature varies with altitude. So, for example, at sea level we will have 20 degrees C, but at 30,000 feet or 10,000 meters we will have much colder temperature. So we cannot express temperature for the general formula, just gonna keep it like this. So this equation tells you that the speed of sound is directly proportional to temperature, well, under the square root, but directly proportional. The higher the temperature, the higher the speed of sound. So where do you think it would be easier to break the sound barrier? On the first march in Colorado or in Texas? So now let's talk about different types of air flows, depending on the Mach number. So if we have the aircraft flying at 343 meters per second, what would be the Mach number? Well, we can find it by dividing 343 by 343, which is 1. So it's going to be Mach 1. How would we call that flight? Well, it's going to be sonic flight. Sonic is exactly at the speed of sound. If Mach number is less than 1, then it's called subsonic because we are lower than the speed of sound. If Mach number is greater than 1, it's called supersonic. supersonic and there's one more type of flow when Mach number is much higher than Mach 1. It is Mach greater than 5. This type of flight is going to be called hypersonic. So very, very fast. Usually only military aircraft can reach those types of speeds or something entering the atmosphere from space. And one more concept we need to touch on here is incompressible and compressible flows. Remember how we assumed incompressible flow for low speeds of air. So now we can actually describe that with the Mach number. If Mach number is much less than 1, so it's approximately 0.2 to 0.3, then in that case we will have incompressible air. We can assume that compressibility effects are very, very minimal. So now we can describe this as actual aerodynamicists. All right, so these are the basic concepts you need to remember about the Mach number. Now let's move on to Reynolds number.